Hey class, so uh, multiple people have been asking me about this last problem on the Wiley homework. It's a bit of a tricky one since we're only really told about the angle of the ramp and the speed, the constant speed the penguin has. Um, so I thought I'd go ahead and make a video to help you guys out. Alright, so let's uh, look a little bit at what we have going on here, what we're given, and what we're trying to find. So we're told that there's this ramp or snowbank. There's actually a lot of fun videos of penguins doing just this sort of thing in nature shows and whatnot. But anyway, we have a penguin who's sliding down here. So here's our penguin. Well, anyway, that's a penguin. Okay. So, uh, and he's cruising down the slope here. And we're told a few different things. We're told that he's moving with a constant velocity. So V is constant. Oh, okay. I'm going to erase that because it's ugly. All right, so we're told that... Let me do this. There's two kind of sections here, right? So in this first section, he has a constant velocity, so V is constant while going down the slope. And so during that time, we know that the V is constantly at 3.52 meters per second. <clears throat> okay, cool. We're also given the angle, theta here, and that's really it, okay? So the fact that V is constant does tell us that our acceleration is zero down the slope, so that's good to know, okay? And then we're given information that we want to determine. We're not asked anything about the slope, but instead we're actually asked how long does it take him to slide to a halt along the flat region. So what we're being told is that here he's going to slide from some initial spot some distance to some final location maybe he ended up here where he stopped okay so the question then becomes what is well really the main question is what is this time t equals question mark how long does it take him to go from point maybe we'll call this point a over here to point b here all right, well, in order to figure that out, if it's a time, none of our force stuff yet that we've learned about deals with time. So if we want to find time, I immediately think equation of motion. So what do we know about our equation of motion? So we know the initial velocity that he starts with at point A is going to be equal to 3.52. That's given to us. Our final velocity at point B, since he comes to rest, we know is going to be 0 meters per second. All right, we, let's see, that's really all we know. We don't know the distance. Hmm. All right, so we want to find time. We know that, okay. So then, based on that information, I immediately think of our equation of motion. It says V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. And so V final is zero. So we can see from this equation here quickly enough that time is going to be equal to a negative V initial divided by our acceleration. Okay, that's cool. So if we can find acceleration, then we can solve for our time. Sounds good. So then the question is, how do we find what our acceleration is? I said a moment ago that our acceleration in the X direction over here is zero. So how can we find acceleration if it's zero. Zero would mean it's, it takes an infinite amount of time. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so what we have to realize is we, again, we still have these two different sections of motion. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit here. All right, so we still have two sections of motion. So we're looking for the acceleration in the second half, right? The acceleration, while on the slope, yes, is zero, but on the flat part, his acceleration is not zero. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram for him on the flat portion. So if we look on the flat portion, all right, and I'll do forces in red. We got the weight going down. We got the normal force going up. And we got the force of kinetic friction going backwards. So here on the flat part, his, acceler <clears throat> excuse me, his acceleration is not equal to zero. All right, so let's look at some of the forces for the flat part. So we got some of the forces in the x is going to be equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. 
and then sum of the forces in the y, we know that will be equal to zero since he's not flying up off the ground magically somehow or anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm trying to move to give myself some more room. Scroll down some more. All right, so let's go ahead and try to set up the forces. So in the x direction, all we got is negative force of kinetic friction equals mass times acceleration. Cool, that's simple. And in the y direction, we have normal force minus the weight force equals zero. Okay, so we can see, all right, normal force equals weight, and that's cool. In the x direction, kinetic force of friction, we can remember, is mu k times the normal force. That's equal to ma. So we can substitute in our normal force. So we have mu k times the weight, which I'm going to substitute mg for weight, equals ma. So if we want to solve for our acceleration, that's what we're trying to find again, then we can look at our equation here. We see straight away, look, our masses cancel out. And what we're left with is that our acceleration that we're trying to find is equal to our coefficient of friction times gravity. All right, that's cool. It's worth underlining. So that's what we're going to plug in up above, up here, for A. But the issue is we don't know what mu is, so we need to solve for mu. So now we need to find our coefficient of kinetic friction. So to do that, we can look back over at the sloped side of our motion where things um, where our acceleration is zero and where we're given information about the angle. So once again let's look at a free body diagram now for our penguin on the ramp. So here he is sliding down. We can define axes. I would define my x-axis as parallel to the ramp <clears throat> and my y-axis is perpendicular. And then the forces that we have acting on our penguin is the normal force, always perpendicular to your ramp. Friction, always parallel to the direction of motion, but opposing it. And then weight force, which is down towards the center of the Earth. And the weight force is acting at an angle theta, as we established before. All right, so let's look at some of the forces. Maybe I'll do them in a new color since we're looking at a different situation. So we have some of the forces in the x direction, which we know since our acceleration in the x is zero, the sum of the forces equals zero. And we know some of the forces in the y direction also should sum to equal zero. And now we're trying to find, again, don't forget, we're trying to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. So before we can start summing our forces, we need to break our weight force into x and y components. So the x component of our weight force we can observe is going to be equal to the weight multiplied by the sine of the angle. And the weight com component in the y direction is the weight multiplied by the cosine of the angle. Cool. Now we can do the sum of our forces. So in the x direction, in the positive x direction, we have wx, which is w times the sine of the angle. And in the negative x direction, we have our force of kinetic friction. And those sum to equal 0. That's an equal sign, not pi or whatever it looks like. In the y direction, we now have in the positive y direction the normal force, and in the negative y direction we have w cosine theta equals zero. Good, so we can now set force of kinetic friction is equal to weight times the sine of our angle theta. Normal force we can observe is equal to weight times the cosine of our angle theta. So now if we want to solve, again, we're trying to find mu, so we need to substitute in. We know that force of kinetic friction is mu times the normal force. We have a lot of things we don't know. Hopefully they cancel out. Let's see. Equals weight times the sine of the angle. Then we can substitute in our normal force. So now we have mu multiplied by the normal force, which is W cosine theta equals W sine theta. So we can observe here, it looks like our w's will cancel out. And we can divide both sides by the cosine. 
So we got mu k equals sine theta over cosine theta. And what is sine over cosine? Well, it is tangent, right? So mu k is just equal to the tangent of our angle theta. So it actually looks quite simple, and we should be able to figure out now what the overall time is because we know that mu is equal to the tangent of theta. So to help you just make sure you're not lost here. So we now know that mu k equals tangent of theta. So if we go over here where we were earlier, that means that our acceleration in the x direction is equal to g times the tangent of our angle theta, since mu is equal to tangent of theta. And so to find our time, what we have to do, zoom out a little bit so we can see it all, we take our acceleration, plug it into our time equation, and based only on the initial velocity and the angle of the ramp, we can solve for our time, which should come out box-worthy. Hope that helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions.